Hello and welcome to the GCN Racing News Show. My name is Joe Timms. You'd usually find me on our weekly racing show over on GCN Plus, Word of Cycling. But today, I'm afraid you're stuck with me as Lloydie continues to recover from his broken ankle. I'm sure you'll join me in wishing Dan a speedy recovery in the comments. On the show this week, we dissect the latest gossip and rumours in the transfer market, with names like Nairo Quintana and Mark Cavendish still apparently available. The Track Champions League continues. We've got all the action from the latest round in San Quentin and Evelyn. The cyclocross calendar is only getting spicier too, with Matthew Van Der Poel entering the fray for the first time this season. The likes of Mariana Voss and Tom Pickock were in action as well. This week in the world of racing, we learned that track cycling is not for the squeamish. Sarah Van Dam was caught up in a heavy crash at the Track Champions League. Fortunately, she was able to continue after pulling this splinter out of her arm. Blimey. We also learned that Matthew Van Der Poel is back. He managed to take his first win of the season in Hulst, despite starting from the fourth row of the grid. And so, let's start with all the latest cyclocross action. The X2O Trophy in Kortrijk was held on Saturday. The women's race was a close affair, with Mariana Voss, Céline Alvarado and Denise Betsema neck and neck entering the final lap. Betsema fell away though, leaving Voss and Alvarado to contend for victory. Alvarado rounded the final corner in front and opened up the sprint, but Voss had enough power to come round her countrywoman to take her first CX win of the season. Betsema settled for third, with Lucinda Brands and Sanna Kant also in the top five. The men's race was a slightly less cagey affair. Tom Pickock attacked on the second lap and was never seen again. It was a fine solo ride from the Brit, who had time to celebrate and enjoy his win. Second place was hotly contested though, with Lars van der Haar and Ellie Isabit duking it out. Isabit gave his all to drop van der Haar on the final lap, but the Dutch champion had the power to come past Isabit in the sprint for second place, with just four seconds covering the podium positions in the end. That was, however, only the precursor in a fantastic weekend of cyclocross action, because Matthew van der Poel made his heavily anticipated season debut at the World Cup event in Hoost on Sunday. Despite starting all the way back on the fourth row, the Dutchman sliced his way through the pack with apparent ease on the opening lap. Despite a few minor tumbles, the Dutch superstar turned the screw on the fourth lap of seven en route to a fine solo victory. That's his fifth career victory in Hulst. Now, the last time VDP participated in a cyclocross race in his normal team jersey, not that of the world or national champion, was all the way back in January 2015, when he was just 19 years old. That nugget is courtesy of Jonas Crater on Twitter, so thank you Jonas. Van der Poel has a history of starting his cyclocross season well. He's won his first race in 10 of the previous 12 seasons. What a record! Thanks to our race preview extraordinaire Will Newton for that stat. Behind Van der Poel, Lauren Swake rolled across the line in second place, while Ellie Isabit was further back in third. This time, he did get the better of Lars van der Haar, who was fourth. Tom Pickock was Van der Poel's closest challenger throughout and was set to finish second, but a broken wheel ruined his chances on the final lap. After initially looking to carry on, the world champion swiftly realised he was fighting a losing battle and promptly called this a day. Swake's second place was enough to see him wrestle the overall lead in the World Cup from Ellie Isabit. Swake sits on 214 points to Isabit's 210. That rivalry looks set to run all season long. On to the women's race, where we witnessed a two-rider battle between the in-form riders at the moment, Puck Peterser and Femme Van Empel. By the end of lap two, both riders were more than a minute clear of everyone else. The riders were neck and neck on the third lap of five when Van Empel crashed on a treacherous downhill section, effectively allowing Peterser to claim victory. Van Empel did go on to finish second though. She was the only rider within 90 seconds of Peterser at the finish line. That says everything about Peterser's incredible form right now. She's on fire. Shiran Van Amroy rounded out the podium places with Céline Alvarado and Lucinda Brands in the top five. Now to the third round of the UCI Track Champions League, which was held in San Quentin and Evelyn, and we witnessed the biggest surprise of this year's event so far. Netherlands Steffi van der Peets shocked the big favourites, including Matilda Grot on home soil and Colombia's Marta Bayona, to win the women's Kirin race by a narrow margin. However, Grot and Bayona would go on to contest the final of the sprint race, and the home fans were able to enjoy a fine victory from the world champion. 
That moves Grot into the lead of the overall standings ahead of Bayona. In the men's sprint category, things stayed largely on scripts, with Harry Lavreyesen and Matthew Richardson dominating proceedings. To start, Lavreyesen took his revenge on his Australian rival to win his first sprint race of the season after Richardson had defeated him in the first two rounds. The duo would hold the limelight in the Kieran race too, with Richardson this time pipping Lavreyesen on the line. With both riders claiming first and second place each, the gap in the overall standings remains just two points, with Lavreyesen on 111 and Richardson on 109. The duo have absolutely dominated the men's sprint category so far this season. Lavreyesen has finished in the top two in every event, whilst Richardson has always been in the top three. These stats become even more mind-boggling when you consider that Lavreyesen was in the top two of every race last season, bar one exception, where he was fourth. If you look up the definition of consistency in a dictionary, I am sure you'll find Harry Lavreyesen's name scribbled down somewhere. Now to the endurance categories, where it was a faultless day for the British women. They completed a clean sweep of victories for the second week in a row. Sophie Lewis began with victory in the scratch race. She caught the field napping and gapped everyone with nine laps remaining. Then, Katie Archbold won the elimination race for the second week in a row, holding off her key rival, Jennifer Valente. That result means Archbold is now just a single point behind Valente in the overall standings with two rounds remaining. And with a home round up next for Archbold, I'm certain she'll be eyeing that top spot. In the men's races, Spain's Sebastian Mora claimed his first UCI Track Champions League win of the year in the scratch race. He was second overall in the endurance category last season, but that's his first victory of the Champions League this time around. Claudio Imhoff was second, whilst Matteo Doniega rounded out the podium positions. Great Britain's Ollie Wood then won the elimination race. That's his second victory of the season after he won the scratch race in Berlin. All of that means that Swiss Claudio Imhoff now holds the lead of the overall standings, but with just 20 points separating the top six riders, it's very much all to play for as the Champions League heads to London this week for a double header. And so, coming up on GTM Plus over the next week, the Track Champions League concludes in London with rounds four and five. As you can tell, there's plenty to fight for in the sprints and endurance leagues, and the atmosphere in the Lee Valley Velodrome will be electric. That's available to all GCM Plus subscribers this Friday and Saturday, the 2nd and 3rd of December. We've also got more cyclocross to look forward to. We have the Super Prestige in Boom next Saturday, the 3rd of December, available to all GCM Plus subscribers outside of Belgium. And then the CX World Cup continues in Antwerp on Sunday, where Wout van Aert will make his long awaited season debut. And that means the first Van der Poel van Aert battle of the CX season. You don't need me to tell you that's unmissable viewing. So get it in your diaries. That will be available on GCN Plus in Europe, excluding Norway, Denmark, Italy and Belgium. But we'll of course bring you up to date in next week's racing news show. This week's documentary features our very own Connor Dunn and Jenny Graham as they explore the country of Mongolia and attempt to conquer Kongorian Els, one of the largest sand dune systems in Asia. On their travels, they also meet the goat herders who thrive in this beautiful but harsh landscape, as well as a desert ice gorge and the site where dinosaurs were first discovered. Here's a sneak peek. We're gonna tackle one of the largest sand dunes in the world. <sighs> This is no easy climb. I just can't turn in it. Ah, no, time to push for a little bit. There's no track and no one has ridden bikes here that we know of. I'm gonna have to rely on instinct to find the summit. The road racing isn't quite done for the year. Down in Monaco, the local pros took to the streets for a downtown criterium in the second annual Beaking Monaco event, which aims to promote sustainable mobility for all ages as well as raise money for a number of charities. Tade Pogacar, Matej Mohoric and Peter Sagan were among the names to line up for the pro criterium, but it was the retiring Philippe Gilbert who got to lift his arms aloft at the finish line one more time in a rather jazzy gold helmet too. It's nice to end up uh, my career like this. Uh, I've been uh, living 13 years now in Monaco, so finishing uh, in Monaco, is, uh, it's really nice. But now, let's talk all things transfer market. The rumour mill is chugging away and no one has been ever present in said rumours like Nairo Quintana. 
the Colombian star was dumped by Arkea Samsic after he tested positive for tramazole at the Tour de France and was subsequently disqualified. Since, a multitude of rumours have been circulating as to where Nairo Man could be heading next season, with the Colombian insisting to Tele Medellin that he will continue racing in the World Tour in 2023. Early last week, speculation began ramping up suggesting that Quintana could be heading to Bahrain victorious, but the team were quick to squash those rumours via Velo News. Nairo's former team, Movistar, also explained that they wouldn't be signing Quintana as their rider lineup is already complete for 2023. Then, speculation began regarding a potential move to either EF Education Easy Post or Intermarche Wanty Gobert. Both rumours were rejected within 24 hours. EF boss Jonathan Vorters ended speculation that Quintana could be wearing EF pink next year with this tweet. Ike Vespeek, who is the performance director at Intermarche, then joked that he's barely recovered from the proposal of football player Cristiano Ronaldo, who was jokingly touted to the team after he was released from Manchester United recently. But despite flummoxed fans and ceaseless speculation, Quintana implored his followers to stay calm when speaking with AS last Wednesday. But I'd love to know where you think he'll be riding in the comments below. Elsewhere in the transfer market, there's still no news on French squad BNB hotels. Team boss Jérôme Pinot has given his riders the green light to search for another team. He admitted that the squad is in dire straits and warned that they could cease to exist entirely should no suitable sponsorship options come to fruition. That makes the likes of Pierre Rolland, Frank Bonamore and talented youngster Axel Laurence available. The UCI gave the team until the end of November to come up with a solution and that deadline is very much looming over them now. Now to some concrete deals in the transfer market though. Lotto Destiny have announced two new riders for next season. 24-year-old German Johannes Adamietz signs after an impressive performance at the Deutschland Tour. In his own words, he's a rider for the mountains and hilly terrain. Whilst 31-year-old Eduardo Sepulveda joins too after the collapse of Gianni Savio's drone hopper and drony team. Sepulveda won a stage and finished on the podium at the Presidential Cycling Tour of Turkey back in April. Elsewhere, Team Bike Exchange have made some changes to their staff. Matt White's new role as Director of High Performance and Racing means he will cover both men's and women's teams. Sean Clark and Megan Shard have joined the women's team as sports directors, whilst former Bahrain victorious man Rafa Vals is the latest addition to the men's fleet of sports directors. Evgeny Fedorov has signed a two-year contract extension with Estana, Kazakhstan. The Kazakh became the under-23 road race world champion in Wollongong in September. In other news, Vuelta España champion Remco Evenepoel has said he will kick off his 2023 campaign at the Vuelta a San Juan in January. The Belgian made his professional debut in Argentina back in 2019 and then returned in 2020 to win the race. Evenepoel is expected to ride the Giro d'Italia next season where he'll surely be among the very leading contenders. Pale Bilbao has told Bass newspaper Dea that he's setting his sights on the 2023 Tour de France. The race kicks off in Bilbao's home region in the Basque country, so it comes as no major surprise. Bilbao was a career best ninth overall at the 2021 Tour de France. His teammate and fellow Basque Mikael Lander also outlined his intentions to ride the Tour next season. Elsewhere, Giacomo Nizzolo has said that his early season target will be Milan San Remo. His best finish at the race was fifth in 2020. Right, that's all we have time for this week. I hope you enjoy the track and cyclocross coming up. We'll be back next week to round everything up. Goodbye for now.